to have my uh, Lisa all here. Start talking right now. Make some noise. Come on now. Get excited. Come on now. Get excited. Come on now. Get excited. Come on Anybody ever see me perform 10 years ago? Yeah. Great, like 10 people, so I still had a big fan club. <laughs> nice, nice, love it. Anybody drinking tonight? <laughs> what do you have in there? I'm having uh, Cheetos and lemon. Cheetos? It's nice. I think they poured me, it's now, it was supposed to be a kettle on the rocks, but now it's just kettle and water. So. Well, cheers, everybody, to the Sunday night. Yeah, that just tastes like water. Just like those boxes. So, little test here. So, any, any millennials in the house? Okay, three. Okay. I hate you fuckers, so... Just don't understand your generation, so... Good. Uh, how about... Uh, how about any, uh, any 80s babies? Good amount of 80s babies. Great decade. Great. How uh, about 70s? I mean, 70s babies. My, my decade. Yeah, I was born in 79. I just made it. Disco era. I had the look, too. I came out with a full Jufro, full chest hair. I made the most of those six months. I was partying it up in Studio 54. How about. Uh, baby boomers. Yeah, pretty good amount. Good. Anybody over different generation? Older than baby boomer? One person. What, what generation? Oh God, that's the greatest generation. The oh God generation. That's the oh God generation. Didn't have anything? No, we just grew up. You just grew up. You didn't have anything. You just grew up. Like a tree. <laughs> good, good. I know we're playing around, but how do we know each other? Really yes. You married my granddaughter. How could you do that to me? <laughs> well, that's why, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Because I want to know if... I don't want to offend you with anything that I say here tonight. So I want to know if I talk about practicing making babies, is that going to be OK with you? I don't think you should practice. <laughs> Take some more. How many grandchildren do you have? Grandchildren. grandchildren. Nine. Nine? Yeah. yeah. Why? Wow. A lot of boys. A lot of boys. And how many great grandchildren? Four. Four. Like so we need more, right? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> one, one more thing. One more thing. Any words that are off limits? That help you out. No, like <laughs> swear words. You don't like to hear? Yeah. I've heard them all. Okay, good. So I was say, if, if there are, then just cover your ears. Everybody, Grandma Joyce. Yeah. Sorry, 91. Out here on a Sunday night. Her 
social life is busier than mine. Really, my wife and I have to ask her when she. It's true. It's true. I'm sorry? You gotta cuddle one with her too. <laughs> you wanna come up here and uh I mean front row seat, I'll take it. It's good places. Um see now you threw me off. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, I'm just kidding. Um so uh like I was saying, um I haven't done stand-up in about ten years. And a, a lot, a lot has happened in the past ten years. Probably the best thing that's happened to me, not in just the past 10 years, but my entire life is, is getting married. She's amazing. She has changed my life. She's changed my world. And, uh, but there's, there's been some rough times in the past 10 years. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, life kicked my ass a little bit. I hit rock bottom. A couple of times, I had some major bouts with depression, but I'm not here to tell you my whole sob story. What, I'm, what I want to tell you is that I got knocked down, but I kept getting back up. And I'm in a really good place right now. Seven to 10 years ago, I didn't think I would ever be doing stand-up comedy again. I just didn't see myself being back on stage. People that knew me, you know, doing stand-up, and they would always ask me, Steve, are you still doing stand-up? You know, I'd want to see another show. And I was always thinking, that's just how my brain works. And I just kept saying, yeah, I'm going to get back into it. I got to do a show. I, you know, I will. And then, you know, I just, I got to this place where I was, you know, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So, um, you know, I've really been working on myself the past two years, you know, physically, mentally. And so tonight is, you know, yes, it's a comeback for me to be, you know, back doing stand-up on stage, which I am really, really thankful for you guys all coming out to support me for that, more, more than you guys know. <laughs> and, and to me, it's also just kind of a, it's just kind of a, a representation for me of just kind of getting back up on top of life and, and kicking ass. So, um, like I said, I'm really happy, I'm really excited, and I, you know, I got a lot to talk about with you guys, so, you know, I, I'm gonna, you know, just delve in, I know I've been kind of blah, 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 but, uh, so, here's one thing that has not changed. People never know what I am, because I'm brown. They always look at me and, you know, they think that I'm Italian, I'm Mexican, I'm Indian. I'm just a Jewish guy with a good suntan. <laughs> and people, they, they have this need to know what kind of brown I am so that they can apply the right stereotype to me. And I know right now I'm not that brown. But that's because it's April in Chicago, and we haven't seen the sun in nine months. <laughs> but in the summer, I get browner and browner. I mean, by August, I'm the color of a Hershey's dark chocolate candy. <laughs> All right. I mean, if he, if my, you know, my life story should be called Fifty Shades of Brown. <laughs> and, yeah. I just, I think it's kind of uh, funny that people are so ignorant and judgmental, you know, about it. So, I just, I have fun with people. I fuck with them. So this, a few weeks ago, we were out to dinner for my wife's birthday. We were at Gibson's Steakhouse, downtown Chicago on Rush Street. Now, we are done eating dinner, and we're outside at the valet stand waiting for our car. Now, this nice red Ferrari pulls up. Guy gets out of the car, he looks at me, he sees that I'm brown. So he walks over to me because he thinks that I'm the valet. <laughs> he hands me the keys and says, go park my car. So I said, no problem, senor. <laughs> and I looked over at my wife and I said, happy birthday. And we drove home and parked that car in our driveway. <laughs> So yeah, this uh, this kind of stuff also happens when I'm working. 
I was selling BMWs for 15 years. And one day, the guy walks into the dealership. He sees that I'm brown. So he comes over to my desk and he looks and sees my business card. And he says, Steve Kahn? Oh my gosh. My last name is Khan too. He must be cousins from Pakistan. <laughs> I said, no, 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 I think you made a mistake, and mine's the Jewish spelling, it's K-H-A-N. He said, no, 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 I know, they made a typo. It should be K-H-A-N. Let me introduce you to my children here. This is a sheet and a poop. <laughs> my wife is at home with that third. She's pregnant with a third child. I said, what are you going to name him, a diarrhea? <laughs> We were thinking a noose, but a diarrhea has a nice flow to it. <laughs> so like I said, we are being expanded family. I'm in a bigger car. I'm thinking like an uh, X5. But don't want to turn the option to the thousand dollars. I said, no problem. It's an option. Don't have to have it. Very good. No third row seat, take out second row seat, another $2,000 rough car. I said, no, that's not the way it works. The second row seat is standard. <laughs> No, 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 you can do it. We are cousins, you can hook it up. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Wait, I don't want you to scratch my back. <laughs> what is going to be price? Now, give me your last price first. <laughs> so I said, 65,000. He looks at me straight in my eye and he goes, you are pushing on my foot. I said, you mean pulling your leg? Whatever you said. <laughs> True story. There's so, you know, got married and, uh, you know, they say your first year of marriage that you, you gain a lot of weight. So my wife and I, we gained 50 pounds. She lost 10 and I gained 60. <laughs> but, <laughs> in the past six months, you know, I've really, I was fucking fat, guys. I mean, I was I, I'm 5'7", and I was 230. I'm not, I'm not an NFL. That's just like, I, I looked pregnant. I thought maybe she got me pregnant in her honeymoon. I, I wasn't sure. But then you would have had some great grandchildren. I would have birth would have been a disaster. But, you know, so, uh, but yeah, I, so, you know, I, I started working out and um, I actually lost 50 pounds. So, so now I can see my dick again. <laughs> I don't remember him being that small. <laughs> my dick, not Obama. I'm gonna clear that up. Clear that up. So uh, my wife, my wife and I, we come from, we come from mixed backgrounds. Um, my, my parents, my my mom's side, no, my dad, my dad's side is Jewish, and my mom's side. Is fucking crazy. <laughs> okay, well, my dad's side is batch crazy. My wife's parents, her mom is Jewish and her dad is Dominican. Hello. So I'm married to a Dominican Jew. I didn't even know they made these people. <laughs> I was on J Day for 15 years. Not once did I see a a Dominican Jew with a cinnamon tan. Never, never, never. And this, you know, one of the sexiest things about my wife is that she's bi. <laughs> lingual, I lingual. I did not let me finish my sentence. Such a dirty crowd. I think it's just, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like a Latin song with like a beat. It just has a rhythm to it, you know? I mean, 
it's just like I think of like a you know, like a Gloria Stefan song, like the Congo, and then you know the other song that I like is is Enrique Iglesias is Bailamos. I'm not a good singer, but like I like to sing in the car and it's like Bailamos, Bailamos. That's what it sounds like to me. In the shower, it sounds good. Um, but yeah, I mean Spanish, it's 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 an uppy language. It's fun. It's just it's like a party, and it's a sexy language too. I mean, you know, especially when a woman speaks it in the bedroom. I papi. But my wife can't say that to me because she actually calls her dad papi, and that would be fucking weird. So we're, you know, we're, we're laying in bed one morning, and I said to my wife, how come you never talk dirty to me in Spanish? And she says, I don't know what to say. I said, well, I don't understand anything, just say anything. I said, here, just like, like, I don't know, just like order food or something. I was like, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. What's your favorite Dominican dish? And she says, mangu. I said, wait, what, what'd you say? And she said, mangu. I said, hold on. Your favorite Dominican dish is called man goo? <laughs> How do you say I want man goo? Yo quiero man goo. How do you say I love man goo? Me encanta man goo. I said, so just yell. Yo quiero man goo. Yo quiero man goo. Me encanta man goo. Me encanta. Yo quiero man goo. Me encanta man goo. And I'll give you my man goo. She's an angel. She, I finally found a person I could put up with my shit. And so, you know, we were dating for a little bit. Grandma likes that. <laughs> so, you know, we were dating for a little bit, and she's just, uh, you know, she's just a wonderful person. And so I, you know, I said to her, I said, what kind of medication are you on? <laughs> she was, Why? I said, well, you're just, you're just happy all the time, so I want to know. What pills you're on so I can tell my doctor to prescribe those for me. <laughs> she said to me, I'm not on any vacation. I'm just, this is just how I am. I said, hold on, wait, wait, wait. You're not, you're just, you're not on vacation? Do you do drugs? No, I'm just, I go, so, okay. You're not on vacation. You don't do drugs. You're just happy? Like, that naturally? <laughs> like, you wake up in the morning in a good mood? <laughs> yeah. oh, so I'm like, okay, well... So this girl is intelligent, she's beautiful, she's happy all the time. She's an executive VP, so she's got health insurance and a 401k. Yeah, I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> I, we're, we're dating a little longer, and I you know, asked him another question. I said, you know, are you such a good person? And she, this, honest to God, this is what she says. She said, because of the way my parents raised me. And I said, yeah. Right? And then I said, thinking to myself, wow, this girl doesn't resent her parents. She actually credits them for doing a good parenting job. My parents fucked me up. That's why I've been for the past 25 years. <laughs> so, you know. And, but here, listen to this. This is crazy. Her parents have been married for over 40 years. And they actually still love each other. This is just foreign to me. Like, I mean, my parents got divorced when I was 12. And they fucking hate each other. They can't even be in the same room together. I mean, my family functions are called family dysfunctions. So, you know, I'm very, very lucky not only to have found my wife. But to marry into such an amazing, wonderful family. And I really, I, I truly mean that. 
I mean, we have dinners like every Wednesday night and everyone everyone talks to each other and shit. <laughs> I'm still just kind of getting used to this whole like normal thing. Uh, my wife is a very modest person and she doesn't really like attention being drawn to her. Obviously, I do. Because I'm up here on stage seeking the attention and approval that I didn't get as a kid. <laughs> but I think that every comedian has got to have some kind of crazy going on in their head because why else with anybody that has panic attacks and anxiety attacks get up in front of 70 people and try to make them laugh? I mean, no pressure there. <laughs> stage that I like, you know, all the attention and making people laugh, it's, you know, it's when, you know, I'm out, I, you know, I, li I like to have fun, I like to, you know, do my accents or my characters, and so, but my wife, she doesn't really like it so much, because it, it draws attention to us, and she kind of gets mad at me, it's like, and so, like, it's kind of like, I'm like a, like a little kid, and she tells me, you know, to stop doing something. <laughs> and so what happens when you tell a little kid to stop doing something? They keep doing it. So yeah, that's me. So when she gets mad at me, she she just she's she goes, Steve, I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> so this one time we here here's a story where I kind of embarrassed my wife. We <laughs> went to Walgreens to pick up my prescriptions, you know, the happy pills, that's what I call them. And I went into another aisle to go grab another item. I come back and I put a pregnancy test down on the counter. And the pharmacist, you know, goes through the whole, do you have any questions? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, you know, I've been taking this stuff for 20 years, you know, whatever. But then I was like, no, I do have a question. And I said, how accurate is this pregnancy test? <laughs> well, this brand that you have brought is very, very accurate. Okay, yeah, I know, it's another Indian. This is a true story. It's Skokie, it's a pharmacist, he happens to be Indian, okay? Just tell him the story. So, the pregnancy test, very, very good brand. But to be absolutely sure, your wife may want to make appointment at doctor. I said, no, 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 the pregnancy test isn't for my wife, it's for me. <laughs> I said, see, I put on all this weight, this is before I lost the 50 pounds. I put on all this weight, I've been having cravings for pickles and ice cream, and I'm very emotional, and, and I know my, there's something kicking in there, I think it's, I think it's twins. <laughs> and then, okay, let, how does this exactly work? So, if the stick turns blue, does that mean that it's a boy? And if it turns pink, then it's a girl. <laughs> now, I can feel my wife's eyes like a laser just glaring at me, so I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> so I kind of just like do one of these, like just kind of glance at it, and she's, Steve, I'm gonna smack you. So then I look back at the pharmacist, and he goes, I know what you are doing. You are pushing on my foot. <laughs> So then another time, now this one, this one was premeditated. I kind of, you know, knew I was going to do this little thing, and obviously my wife did. We went to Home Depot, and we went to an aisle where, you know, we, we found a gentleman that I thought would be able to help us. And I said, <clears throat> excuse me, sir, can you help me with my coke? <laughs> looks at me and says, excuse me? I said, yeah, I need help with my cock. It is, uh, I'm having problem getting the stuff to come out of the cock. I was told, come here, they have a device that will help it make it shoot out. She <laughs> so oh, you need a cock gun. I said, I, I don't really want to shoot my cock, but if it works, you know, I'm going to try anything at this point. <laughs> So he is just trying not to laugh. He's, you know, and I'm determined. Like, I'm going to break him. 
I'm gonna break him. I'm not looking at my wife, because I know she's already pissed. I don't wanna get that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack you. That's coming later. So, so he says, well, you know, how big of a you know, tube of caulk are you gonna be using? And I said, well, you know, my caulk is not so big. It's like, um, you know, kind of like medium size. Like, I can show you if you like. Because <laughs> I had actually bought the tube of caulk beforehand and I had it in my pocket. So I'm reaching down to take out the tube of caulk and this guy goes ghost white. He literally thinks that I'm gonna whip out my junk. So I take out the tube of caulk and all the color came back to his face. And then he says, oh, okay, so he said, okay, you know, so he takes the, the tube of caulk, he puts it in the caulk gun, he tightens it up, and he says, okay, I'm going to uh, cut the, the tip of the, the tube. I said, hold on, you want to tip, cut the tip of my caulk? So he sips and I'm like, oh gosh, that hurts. <laughs> so then I said, okay, now show me how I work this device. He said, well, basically, you just take the little handle and you squeeze it, and the caulk's gonna come out of the tube. So I said, okay, so let me get it straight. I squeeze handle, stuff shoots out of my caulk. I said, yeah, basically. I said, what if I squeeze handle really hard? Will it shoot out very far? He said, yeah, the harder you squeeze it, the more that it, you know, that it's gonna come out of the tube. So I look over at my wife and I said, Honey, when we get in the car, you cannot play with my cock because I don't want to make mess. <laughs> and then what does my wife say? Steve? Um, I'm the same. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> today, today is actually the four year anniversary of our first day. Really. I, I remember these kind of things, these details. I've saved every single card, every single note my wife has ever given to me. She says that I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I think that I'm just romantic and sentimental. And I'm also sensitive. She thinks that I say, <laughs> she thinks that I say sensitive, funny. <laughs> That person that was laughing really loud when I say sensitive? <laughs> Maybe my wife. So, you know, yeah, I'm a little sensitive, but I'm just, I'm in touch with my feminine side and I'm okay admitting that. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I do some woman-like things. Like when we go away for a weekend, I need to pack a 40-pound suitcase full of clothes, 10 outfits. Why? Because I need options. You women know why. Yes. I mean, one night, I may want to get dressed up. I may want to be more casual. One day, I may be feeling fat and I need some more comfortable clothes to wear. And yeah, I also have a pair of shoes for every outfit. Yeah, guys, I own more than two pairs of shoes. <clears throat> and then, also, the this happened this week. So, this past Thursday, I came here to do a rehearsal, a run through, and just by myself, and I was videotaping it. And I, I put on exactly what I was gonna wear tonight, and so it was just like, you know, everything was gonna be the same, except nobody was here. So I was just talking on the wall back there. I videotaped myself, went back home, turned on the video, my wife and I are watching it, and First thing she says is, oh, Steve, you look good. And I go, no, I look fat. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? I lost 50 pounds and I just look fat. I said, look at my gut, do you see my gut? <coughs> like, what, what the hell? So I'm like, I'm, uh, in, we're watching the whole thing, I'm not even watching my material. All that I'm concerned about is the way I look. <laughs> so she says, you know, Steve, it's not, you're not fat, it's just your posture. I said, what do you mean it's my posture? She said, well, when you walk around, like, you kind of, like, stick your stomach out. I go, what do you mean? So for 40 years, I've been walking around, and, you know, I just, you know, I, 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 I've been, you know, 
what kind of posture do I need? And she said, well, you kind of walk around like this, with your stomach out. So I'm like, well, okay, show me how to walk. She was, you, you know, you kind of need to do a pelvic tilt, like, like this, and then, you know, like tighten your stomach up. So I said, okay, great. So now I gotta try to remember all my fucking material and then be up here on stage with like, tell me to like this. That's why I have the fucking notes. I'm more concentrating on this. So here's what I need you guys to do for me. If you start to see the so good, just go, Steve, posture. Posture. Is that, I'm paying good money to have this filmed and I really want to look good on the video. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I, I wasn't happy with what I was going to wear. So the next day I go out and buy like five more shirts and clothes, come home, I'm trying on all these different things for my wife. Usually this is the reversal thing. And you know, do I look fat in this? Do I look fat in this? No, you look good. No, are you lying to me? No, you're not lying to me. <laughs> okay, just, like, yeah, I act like a girl. And uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, and then also, Chris actually did, had to do an extra 10 minutes of material because I had to redo my hair twice <laughs> backstage. But see, here's why. Here's why. I went to my hairstylist a few, yeah, I go to a hairstylist at a salon. I don't go to a barber. So I went to my hairstylist and I said, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm sick of my hairstyle. I don't like it. I want to do something different. I don't know what to do. I'm really indecisive. Just use your creativity and just have it. So he cuts my hair, he styles it, and I really like the way that it looks. So, you know, the, but here's the problem. I can't do my hair myself to make it look the same way that he did. So I called him up and I said, and I, so he says, okay, here's, Here's the key. It's all about the product that you put in your hair. He says, what you gotta do is you gotta take the product, and a little goes a long way. So take about a quarter size and put it in your hand and then put it through your hair. Well, that doesn't seem like enough to me. So I take like a dollar fifty in quarters and put it in my hand, and then put it through my and my hands get stuck. So I don't, I don't even know if my hair looks good. I'm not sure if I like it. I would have done it again, but Chris didn't have any more material. <laughs> so, no, it's just, you know. You're sexy. Right, thank you. <laughs> so, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, I, I, uh, posture. thank you. <laughs> and see, I'm very self-conscious. You need the compliments. That's why I'm up on stage. Give the attention, and so, um, and uh, you know, what's the term? Is it metrosexual? Yeah, metro metrosexual, metro right. I was a metrosexual way before that term was even relevant. Because when I was five years old, my mother was already raxing my unibrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very hairy. You know, I got a manscape, the, the chest, the back. This one time, though, I had the ultimate of manscapes. <laughs> Not by choice. See, what happened was is I lost a bet to an ex-girlfriend. Way, 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 way before I met my wife. Way before. I don't remember what the bet was, but what I had to do was get the equivalent of what a Brazilian wax is. <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, what a Brazilian wax is, it's when a woman, actually if any women don't hear no, then shame on you. It's when a woman goes and has to get all this, and all this, waxed. Smooth. So she makes the appointment. And I guess it's called a manzilla. So I'm there, I'm in the room, I'm naked, I'm on this table, I just have a little towel covering my ass. <laughs> the woman that's going to do this mansling comes in and she says, okay, I need you to get on a all full. So I was like, all right, so I get, I'm on a table and I'm on, I'm all, I'm on all fours. Not, not really the position that I want to be in. 
Then she says, okay, now spread that cheek. So now you're back and I gotta fucking spread my ass cheeks. Then she starts to put on this hot, wet, like right in my bunker. I mean, she is so close to my asshole. This is just, I'm like, okay, yeah, I understand why women don't like this. this is, you know, it's burning already. This is probably the worst part. Then she puts on this, I don't know, like this piece of paper over the wax. Oh, yeah. And then she goes, okay, Steve, I'll brace yourself. It's gonna hurt a little bit. And she whips that motherfucker off my ass. I jump up like, motherfucker! And I'm, I'm crying, there's tears running down my eyes. I'm like, we're done, that's it, no more. <laughs> sir, no, sir, no, you can't be dumb. Just your ass half a hairy, half a tree. You don't want to look a good. How did I get talking about waxing my ass? What was I talking about? Mar yeah, uh, marriage. Back to marriage, yes. Back to marriage. Um, so, you know, when you're, when you're married, you know, now that I'm married, I don't have to worry about what I'm having for dinner anymore every night. Not because my, not, not because my wife cooks every night. I do actually most of the cooking, I make dinner most nights. But because in the morning, before my wife leaves for work, she comes to say goodbye to me, and then she tells me an inventory of every single thing that we have in the refrigerator and the freezer. We have pasta, we have chicken, we have kielbasa sausages that you can make with the pasta, or you could do marinara sauce, we have pesto sauce, or we have frozen turkey burgers that you have something busy with the cauliflower mashed potatoes. I haven't even gone to take my morning piss yet, and this woman is worried about what we're having for dinner. Now that is the Jewish side of her. Yeah. Us Jews, we like to worry about what we're going to have for our next meal before we're even done eating our current one. <laughs> and you know, I was talking kind of about like people like being, you know, a little racist or whatever, but you know, it's okay for people to say, you know, I really feel like going out for some Indian food, or you know, I could really go for some Mexican, or why don't we go for some Italian? But here's one thing you never heard. Let's go for some Jew food. <laughs> Jews don't even like going for Jew food. Jews like to eat Chinese food. I don't know why we like to eat Chinese food so much. I don't think it's reciprocated. I've never heard a Chinese person say, oh, I really have a craving for a rice and bagel and a masa ball soup. That's two years. But, it, no, but it's because our wives talk. And I get status updates on what's going on with my friends of 35 years via our wives. I mean, I found out things about my best friend that I didn't know in 35 years. I didn't know my best friend had asthma. <laughs> we grew up playing sports together. Baseball, football, basketball. This kid could have had an asthma attack, died, never mentioned shit about any asthma. And then... She's also in charge of the social calendar. She's like the social coordinator. I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. I didn't even know the show was today. She had to tell me. I stopped asking. I just get in the car. She tells me where we're going. I don't turn on navigation. She's my navigation. She also tells me when to stop. She, there's also, did you guys know? Did you guys know that there is a brake on the passenger seat? <laughs> like this. I also have lane departure assist. It's clear. No, don't go. Don't go. You're going the wrong way. Slow down. I sold BMWs for 15 years. This stuff costs a lot of money. Just get married. You don't need to buy me that shit. I should go back to selling cars now and be like, oh, no. You don't need any of this. Just get married. <laughs> then your car will be like 15,000 less time. You don't need any options. You don't need any options at all. You don't even need brakes. She has a brake right here. <sighs> so yeah, I just, I get in the car. She tells me where to go, what we're doing, who we're seeing. So when you're, 
when you're almost middle-aged and married, you go out with other couples. So this one time a few months ago, we're going out, and I said, what are we doing? So she said, we're, we're going out to dinner with Josh in Amy. I said, oh, nice. And she's going to, but we're going to go stop at their house first. I said, why are we going to stop at their house? She's like, I'm going to pick them up. It's like a first date. So I'm like, I, I want to go to the restaurant. I want to eat. I'm hungry. She said, well, you know, they, they, they remodeled their house, and you know, I really want to see a tour of the house. She said, Steve, you know, no accents tonight, no characters behave. Or you know, smack. So we get to their house. <clears throat> we go in, and... Amy is conducting the tour. So, you know, we're, so we've done, we've, we've done the floors, and this is a lighter wood, because we wanted to go with the cabins in the kitchen. We're just trying to do a whole theme. And as you notice, we had the electric stove top on the counter, and then here's the girls' room, and then, oh, don't look at this right here. We're not finished with this. We don't really know what we're doing. How come every time somebody remodels their house, there's always one thing that there's a project that hasn't been finished yet? Doesn't make sense. So then we're gonna continue to I'm getting bored. So then, and we're gonna go, okay, and this is the master bedroom, and then I'm like, okay, switch is gonna go on. So I'm like, you know, oh, that's a nice bed spread. I'm like, oh, okay, so, okay, so this is where you guys fucking. <laughs> Steve. <coughs> so we're out to dinner, having a good time. Eating, my buddy gets a text. It's like, oh shit. I said, what's the matter? You know, something with the kids? He goes, no, no. We, we gotta go. I go, why? He goes, because it's 9.30 and we have to be home by 9. The babysitter texted. I said, whoa, whoa. You're, you're, you got a curfew from your babysitter? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She just turned 21. She told us to be home by 9 because she's going out tonight. She's partying. We, just, we gotta go. We gotta go. We weren't finished with dinner. We paid the bill. And I find myself walking this couple, our four-year-old date couple, back to their house and wind up in their house again. So then... Amy says to the babysitter, what forms of payment do you take? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so the babysitter goes, well, I take Venmo, I take PayPal, I take Chase Quick Pay. She's even got one of those things that you put in your iPhone with the credit card swiper. <laughs> what the fuck? When I grew up, the babysitter are cash. What, the, what happened to those days? And then, and then the babysitter goes, and I'm gonna need an Uber. So they call her an Uber, She's on her way, so I said to my buddy, I go, Josh, how much did you pay the babysitter? He said, well, normally we pay her $20 an hour, but since we were late, we kind of felt bad, so I gave her $25 an hour. I said, okay, you realize what you just did, right? You put this girl in an Uber and sent her to the bar to get white girl wasted. <laughs> so, we have two nieces, a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And these two little girls are the cutest. They, they light up my life, they're just joy. And they're funny. <laughs> funny, but like funny to me because I have a really immature sense of humor <laughs> and they like to tell fart and poop jokes all the time, which I still find funny. So we have this nice little bond, right? But I know that there's some things that I shouldn't laugh at because I'm an almost middle-aged, mature adult. So last week, the five-year-old says to me, Uncle Steve, can I come to your recital? <laughs> I said, well, it's, it's not a recital, it's a comedy show. She said, what's that? I said, well, I tell jokes. She says, Oh, like the knock-knock jokes? I said, no, like adult jokes. Oh. So you're going to say, shit. <laughs> Girl knows her swear words. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> no, I don't know where she learned them. <laughs> Another time, we were babysitting them for a weekend at their house, and the three-year-old, she says to me, she goes, Uncle Steve, Uncle Steve, Uncle Steve, Uncle Steve, Uncle Steve. See, the words in her brain 
are going so much faster than they come out of her mouth. So you it just you just gotta let it just come out. So you know, Uncle Uncle T, Uncle T, I want I want I want to know what? Yeah. I want I want I want I want to show you something. Okay. So she takes my hand and she walks me over to the garage and she says, I want to show you my pink cooter. <laughs> and I'm looking at her scooter and thinking to myself, Steve, don't laugh, you immature fuck. <laughs> and I said, oh, your scooter. <coughs> huh? I really like to play with my cooter. I don't let anyone else play with my cooter. I said, yes, that is a good idea. Don't let anyone else play with your cooter, I mean scooter, until you're at least married. <laughs> this little three-year-old says to me, Uncle Steve, by the time that I'm married, I'm gonna be a grown-up, and I'm gonna be too old to play with my cooter. <laughs> I do have one more bit to do for you guys tonight, but I want to uh, take a moment to talk about something a little bit more serious. And I'm reading this just because I don't want to forget anything that I want to say. So um, I really do. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight to support me. It, it really means more than you know. And as you either know or have figured out from tonight, I have mental illness. Over the past couple years, I've decided to share my story so that I could possibly help people that are struggling or don't know how to get help. So with that in mind, I started, I started a foundation for mental health awareness to help and educate and, and break the stigma. All the ticket proceeds from tonight's show are going to that cause. There's one in four people that actually have mental illness and everyone's going through some sort of shit. And I think that laughter is the best medicine. It's not gonna cure mental illness, it's not gonna cure any type of disease, but everybody, least, everybody needs to laugh. So I've realized that that is something that gives me some purpose. So the next chapter of my life, I'm dedicating to making people laugh and helping those in need while spreading Mental health awareness. Thank you. So, as I said, this is a comedy show, and I'm not going to let you guys leave without one last bit. So, as I was telling you guys about my nieces, you know, we're, we spend a lot of time with them. They really like when we read them books. And so it got me kind of thinking that, you know, well, what would it sound like if like some of my favorite athletes or movie characters or even presidents, you know, when they read their kids, kids books. So I'm gonna give you a little example of what it's going to sound like. <laughs> hey, yo. I'm Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion. Hey, yo, Adrian, you know, my, my brain is kind of relaxed, so you know, I don't read too good. But, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna read Humpty Dumpty to the kid. I don't, I want him to be a somebody, not a dum dum like me. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Hey, yo, absolutely. Hey, yo, Adrian, this kind of sounds like it's about me. <laughs> Rocky Balboa sat on a wall. Rocky Balboa had a great fall. 
Mickey and Apollo truly put Rocky back together again. <laughs> hey, yo, Adrian, I think I'm pretty good at this. Maybe I should start writing nursery rhymes. <laughs>
I'm surprised this guy don't want to dig because he brought his own stand up comedy field kit. You know, this is like how much water. And then I saw the toilet paper and I was like, holy shit. So I have been here for hours. You know? like, what is he going to do with that? All right. I have to say, um, I've been doing stand up comedy in Chicago for five years. Uh, of all the nights, this is probably one of the most heartfelt, vulnerable, funny that Steve could have done. So, round of applause for Steve. Yeah. And you guys are nothing short of amazing for coming out and supporting them. So round of applause for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs>